Last episode, we were working on the crank and assembling the bottom end until we found that we needed to do some micro polishing to the crank to get it clear as good. So we have to finish the head up while we're waiting for the crank to be micro polished. And here it is, the head is finished. Now we're going to continue to port match the intake manifold and actually cut open the plenum and port the intake manifold like this. So this one is going to be fun for you to check. And also we talk about the common misconception on how to identify a type R head, especially locally when they think that it's a PR3-3, it's already a type R, but it's not really a type R like that. First things first, our new page is up and running because my personal Facebook account got hacked and it got disabled, so I lost moderation control on the old page, so I had to make this new one. So here we have the price list of even the head porting, engine building, even cam degree, and also ECU tuning and porting in the manifold. So the, so the basic work that we offer, there's a price list there. As you can see, we, we share, like when this B20 VTEC came in, we actually posted it right away, and here are the plans and all the setup. This way it gets updated for you guys really good. Then we even share when we're port matching the in an intake manifold that we're doing at the shop and share a header or exhaust collector mod that we did. So the page is really good for you guys to check out. I try to respond as much as I can on each comments there. So I'll see you there, all right? So on the earlier episode, we we're talking about how the brand new bank that the previous owner or the previous builder used when rebuilding it and had unusual wear. We also did find out that the crankshaft needed micro polishing so that we can get the necessary clearances on the mains and the rod bearings that we want. So we sent that to the machine shop. So while we're waiting for that, we finished on the cylinder head. And as usual, we cut an intake gasket that matches perfectly on the head that we're using right now. As you can see here, it's matched perfect, right? It's well, it's actually cut right exactly like the intake ports. This way we can port match it into the manifold. And here, after scribing the line based on the intake gasket that we cut exactly on the head, you can see it's off right, right on the roof, but on slightly on the left side only. So now we got to cut the plenum so that we can port this all throughout or all the way, whichever term you prefer to use. So now let's head to the porting bench. But wait, let me show you where we scribe the line where we're going to cut the plenum. This way we can port it from the plenum side from the runner entry all throughout into the flange. Here it is. So now we cut this off camera. So now let's go to the porting bench and start the work. Here it is, all ready for the carbide. And sorry about the background noise because my colleague is grinding on something. He's working on other stuff. So, hey, now we can start with the carbide. Starting off with the carbide here is really, really good because it saves time. We're not rushing it, but it doesn't take too long. And of course, you can get to the shape that you need to get to. And actually, you can feel the core shift or the ridges that you need to smooth out as you go with the carbide. So here we are. We're starting with the first three inches into the runner. This way, the taper is consistent, you know, there. And now here, we're going to try to flare this a bit and show you guys. Here, let me show you. We flare the number one runner. So the rest has to continue with that. So while we flare this, we're not going to really play the record button on the phone because I tend to cover the fold itself because I have to do certain angles. So here it is, all flared up now. Look at that. It still needs to go a bit more, but hey, you can see where it's going, right? It's starting to look really, really good. Yes, yes. All right. And then we're going to start now. We make passes on the 80 grit here. Here's the 80 grit. Well, we spray the lubrication first. The ethyl and soapy water, soapy water mix. Okay, it's 80 grit. This one gets the finish, not really quick, but you start to see actually where the shape is or how the shape is because of the reflection of the glare or the light 
under the surface and you're gonna you start to see where you need to work in it more or where it's enough there are times that we still go back to the carbide and then go back to the 80 grit back and forth just to get the shape that we need to get to or we desire not all the time but there are times that we have to do that so there that's getting smooth as you can see right yes it's gonna start to look good okay let's look at it close now Look at that, this is just 80 grit. So there are times that we finish the manifold with just 80 grit, but there are times that we go with 120. You know, it really depends. But this, we might go with 120 grit because it's starting to look really, really good. So, yep, now we're gonna continue working on this. As you can see, it's just 80 grit, but it's starting to look good, right? We're gonna continue working on this and then essentially, eventually go to 120 grit to get the necessary shape and smoothness that we want and then of course we're gonna wash this up and then show you guys we go back to the workbench when it's done so hey maybe we should go now here it is after cleaning it with water you can see now it looks really really good we might do a bit of finishing touches but this looks really good now it's good to be finished or good to be done and this is 120 grit you can see how the finish is good and consistent so this uh, this actually looks good now because for a B20 VTEC on Crower 403 cams, this ensures it breathes properly. So now let's look at the other side. Here it is with the lighting and you can see this is 120 grit finish. Let me focus it better. There, you can see it's, it's good from the runner entry all the way to the intake manifold flange that goes to the head, as you can see. And look at look at the scribing line that we did for port matching it based on the gasket. It's really, really close. There's a slight step, but it's almost just perfect. Yes, now this looks really, really good, right? Because this is dry flow, it's just air. The injectors are after the intake manifold. This is gonna be really good. Yes. The light's going weird because of the iPhone. Sorry about that. So you know, it started from this here, like this, if you remember, right? Now it's gone really good after the work that we did. You can see there the line. Now it's good. And from the runner entry, it was like this first before our work or before we started porting on it to make it more efficient. And now the end product is this. Look at that. So you know this is going to be really good. It's going to be more efficient and promote good torque. And for the B20 VTEC on 403 Crower cams, this is going to be really, really good. So yep. And because this has a different task on porting the intake manifold because the B20 VTEC setup with the proper header is going to breathe, breathe really good. So we're making sure this does not become the limit for it. Whereas on a single overhead camera on the D series, it's a different aspect. We got to port the intake manifold to promote better top end because there's always lacking of cam. So yep, they're both ported, but with two different tasks or two different goals and approach. So there's always a difference. So when they say ported the intake manifold, how is the question and if it's properly done? Now that's an idea. We'll probably make a dedicated video on the membership only that talks about how you do or what you do when you're porting a manifold if you're lacking cam or lacking rpm all the different targets like for example if you're lacking cam duration or actually wanting more rpms or there's lack of compression there's a different different targets for each one of them of course everything all of it leads to better efficiency and now here with the head all finished up and you see the exhaust is looking really good right we finished the exhaust with 120 grit. We can go smoother, but you know, it's it's already good enough with 120 grit. And here's the block as it stands because the crank is still being micro polished. So the block is there with the ACL race main bearings. Look at the main bearing tunnel. Yeah, looking good. So it's just waiting until we get the crank. So we got to do the test fitting once the crank arrives. So it's gonna be good and fun. So we're just waiting on that. So it'll be a really good and you guys will be updated right on the next episode on that. Of course, here's the VDI engine that we just finished and we have a video of that. So I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it. And of course, 
hit the like button if you're liking this video because you know it helps the algorithm spread the video out more and subscribe if you haven't so you guys can be here in the community so subscribe now let's go back to the head and sorry guys if you, can, you guys can hear the rain it's been raining here okay here the intake ports are done in 80 grit so yeah it's gonna look good right so let's look at it close there you go. And actually, in the membership only video, I have a very, very extensive video on porting like a type R or doing a type R style porting and all the other good things that you do or you need to know when you're doing this. So here, this one is ready. You can see, let's look at the picture here. At this angle, you can see the consistency between the sidewall of the port onto the bowl is really good. So this is going to be very, very efficient. Now onto the exhaust, same thing, but this one, we finished it with 120 grit, so it's smoother to the finish, or to the touch, sorry. And that's good because it, carbon would stick to it, so, you know, the smoother it is, the lesser chance you get from that. Yeah, so you can see this, still the ridge be, before the valve seat is still there. We didn't really hog that out because we're trying to streamline this, not enlarge it like huge and lose much torque. And here's a picture. You can see the light. The contours show you the consistency of, of the exhaust port on this opposite side. You can see from the divider to the port wall to the bowl. This is going to be really, really good. And this is how we do the exhaust ports on all B16 and even D series. Okay, so now let's talk about this one. The full setup on this B20 VTEC is here. It's, it has, well, of course, it has a ported B16A head, a Crower 403 cam with a Crower valve drain, one up pistons, and Skunk 2 Pro Series intake manifold that we ported, and of course, a long tube 421 header, a, an SMSP copy. So we know this will be really, really good. And the reason why we share this is because so everyone else can actually follow the specifications that's fine just like ecu later or jasper's b20 vtech that runs 12.5 we openly share the setup so now let's calculate the compression actually okay now let's go to zeal auto works we go compression calculator okay we go to wait we click the b series let's go there okay wait let's put this on the center okay now we go with the b20 block Yes, and then of course a B20 crankshaft, obviously, in a PR3 B16A head. And because the one-up pistons has a P3F compression height, we use that and a 7.5 cc dome volume. All right, now we go to the B20 connecting rod. The head gasket is correct, 0 0.026. Okay, now let's calculate it. There, it's 12.47 is to one compression, but we have a total of 0 0.010 resurfacing on the block and the head so it's one fourth millimeter total so we go to put that in and there you go so we have 12.85 is to one compression ratio static and this is perfect for crower 403 cams and of course our local pump gas so this is going to be really really good Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And now remember this, when the engine arrived before this assembly, we saw the VTEC line was the old school pattern or old school way. So we're going to do our version that's more reliable and it's not prone to cracking. And we'll show you that in the next video so that everyone can avoid having a cracked head or line for the VTEC in here. On the Type R, well, locally misconception. I can't really say for the guys in the US because it's probably different. They say here, PR3-3 is a Type R head. No, it's not. The Dash 3 is usually because it's third generation. Like first gen is the EF, the second gen is the EG, and this 99 up is actually a third gen. And you can see here, it says 99. And the other misconception is on this three squares here, if it's like embossed, they say it's Type R. When it's not, it's only if it's like 99 upwards casting the latest casting is like that so obviously including a type r so hopefully that clarifies a lot of well certain misconceptions locally because locally they think that is if it's a pr3-3 it's a type r when it's not always a type r so hey you know because this is worth knowing knowing because the prices now is crazy high all right okay 
So we're gonna do a little bit more of a finishing touch of this Kung 2 intake manifold, but it's almost done, right? Well, actually it's, it's done. We're just gonna do some small bits. And of course, as soon as the crankshaft arrives, we're gonna assemble the bottom end and you can click just here for that.